we're gonna do something we've never done before. First time ever I bought a deep fryer. I know, crazy, right? Because we do nothing but air fryer videos. I shouldn't say nothing, but we do a ton of air fryer videos. So today we're gonna do a review on a Hampton Beach deep fryer that has two small baskets and one large basket, which I'm pretty excited about. I've never owned one. So I'm a bit of a rookie deep fryer. So bear with me, but you can see here, we've got it ready to go. Uh, minus putting our oil in, we wanted to do that. The baskets are very sturdy. I like them a lot. This I find flimsy. Number one rated deep fryer in Canada, $100. I actually bought it at Walmart. Uh, I should say that we're not affiliated whatsoever with Hampton Beach. Jamie and I buy all our own stuff. As you know, if you're a fan of the show, we buy all kinds of products. We, we test them, we review them, we give you our thoughts, the whole nine yards. So let's get started. I don't know if you can see on the angle here, but there is a min max. Now, according to the book, and I'm just gonna reference it here, right here, right here, because I have it in front of me. They say a minimum of 15 cups or 3.5 liters and a maximum of 19 cups or 4.5 liters. So I've got a little drop left in this. I'm gonna cook with canola oil today. Canola oil, vegetable oil, different people have different preferences, but I happen to have canola oil, so that's what we're gonna use. But I'm gonna keep this container because according to the book and according to Ham Ham uh, Hamilton Beach? Yeah, Hamilton Beach, you can reuse your oil 10 to 12 times or for 10 to 12 cooks, of course, depending on how much you're cooking, if you're cooking fries versus meat, wings, so on and so forth. But they say once your oil starts to get dark and kind of smelly, time to get rid of it. So my plan with this is going to be take everything apart and dump it, strain it and dump it back into this and you know put a note on it that it's used oil or whatever and then we could reuse it that way. So we talked about should we measure this out and we thought, well, we'll trust that the, the book is accurate. All right, so I sort of split the difference between the min and the max. Actually, no, now that it leveled out, it's still at the min. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. So you probably can't see that from your angle, but it's just, I don't know if you could see here, it does say max, it's hard, it'd be hard to see unless you, sh here, let me give you a, hold on, Jamie, let's get creative here. There, can you see that now? It's just below what they call the max. So we're gonna turn this on. There's a setting here that's, there is a timer, built-in timer, and there's something that's just called stay on. So we're gonna go to stay on, and we're gonna go to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know how long that's gonna take, but we could set a timer to see just for the sake of the video. We'll see how long that takes and we'll be back. Roughly 11 minutes to get it up to temperature. You'll see, maybe difficult to see, there's actually a green light here that comes on that tells you when it's ready. This is not digital, so I set it for 300, it could be 305 or whatever, but I do have my old trusty meat thermometer, which is also good for oil, so let's just see, if, just for fun. So, I don't think we have to wait for the whole time, but I think it gives you a pretty good idea that it's pretty accurate. So what I did was I, I did a bunch of hand cut French fries, did a water bath in them, and then dry them with the towel. And as most of you would know, oil and water don't mix. So you wanna make sure that these are dry. We're gonna use the big basket and throw those in. Now, in the instruction manual, I'll show you, there's no cooking suggestions, cook times, anything whatsoever on this uh, specific model in the book. But when I did go on the website, I did find a suggestion on fries. Kind of an interesting cook technique. They suggest 300 degrees Fahrenheit, for six minutes, take them out, let them sit for 10 minutes, crank your temperature up to 375, and then two to three minutes more. So it's almost like a twice cooked homemade French fry. So I'm gonna try that and see how it goes. So I'm gonna carefully, and I should set my timer here, six minutes, and we're gonna carefully drop that in. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this on camera here, then we're gonna put our lid on. And there we go. So we're gonna give that the six minutes that they suggest, take our lid off and have a look. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our timer here and the first thing I notice is, is there is some moisture dripping down here. I don't know if you can see that, Jamie. So quick and funny story, I actually ordered this from Walmart and they delivered it to the wrong house. And my neighbor sent me a message saying, hey, your package arrived, I'm gonna drop it off at your house. We have the exact same one. Just be careful of the moisture that it creates. So shout out to my neighbor on that because she's 100% right. Uh, we haven't taken the lid off yet, but you can see in the glass that there's a lot of liquid here. We're gonna be very, very careful and cautious when we take that lid off, knowing that there's gonna be a lot of mo moisture built up there. And I'll probably just sort of flip that lid in the sink and get rid of that. So that's just one observation I've made already. All right, timer went off. So now let's carefully Remove that. That's not actually as bad as I thought it might be. And then we're gonna lift these out. 
and hook them on the side. And then I might as well use the timer that they have. They said to wait 10 minutes and we're gonna turn that up to 375, which is actually the highest setting on this. So already they look, they're starting to look really good. So we're up to temperature 375. The first observation I can make is they suggest cooking these for two to three more minutes. Now I just went to move these around with a fork and you can see they're not even close to being done. So I don't know how two to three more minutes is gonna do it, but we're gonna try for accuracy rather than use the little dial. I'm just gonna use the timer on my phone. So I'll set it for three minutes. Let's drop these in. Give them a little bit of a shake. We'll get our lid on. So three minutes is up. Carefully take this off. Okay, it did make a big difference. Wow. Those look really nice. And just by shaking them, they feel well done or, or cooked perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give these a few seconds to sort of sit. I'm gonna try one because again, we've never used a deep fryer here in the average kitchen. I'm gonna try one see what it's like, and if they have to drop again, that's fine, or they may be perfect, so give us a few minutes. So likely this is still ripping hot, it's even hot to hold. Feels a little flimsy, so it all depends. It's like anything else, like wings, anything, everybody has desired level of crispiness of what they like their food cooked at. Jamie and I are crispy guys. Uh, let's see what this is like, it's gonna be hot. And it is. Super nice and fluffy on the inside, but I really don't have that sensation like these are just right out of the oil, super crispy, deep fried french fries. So I think I'm gonna give them like another two minutes. All right, so the two minutes is up, pop that off. Let's try it out. Pop, really nice and crispy. Yeah, really nice. Next thing we're gonna do is cook a couple pogos, and I think our American friends call them corn dogs. So let's see how those cook up. We're gonna do a couple pogos, or like I said, our friends call them corn dogs in the States. Are you gonna fire up the deep fryer and get the oil going for two pogos? No, you're not. But for the purpose of this task and this video, we thought, what's something we could do that's kind of a little bit unique? And I came up with pogos. So normally these are kept frozen. So I did let them thaw out, because as we all know, oil and water don't mix. And I just thought I'd get a better result with uh, a thawed out uh, pogo. These are gonna take three to four minutes. I'm gonna do the four minutes and see how they, uh, how they work out. So we're gonna put those in. Now we could technically be using the smaller baskets. Why would we dirty them right now when we don't need to? But you do understand it comes with the two small baskets, which would be perfect for this application. But this is already dirty, so we're just gonna uh, use this. I say dirty, it's already been in the oil. 375, we'll drop them in, we'll set it for four minutes. Uh, about three and a half minutes, you'll see, I did prop them up here because just the way that they were balanced, the one side wasn't quite as cooked as thoroughly. As, you see that little strip there? So I wanted to try to get that, but they certainly look awesome. So let's give those a few minutes to cool down before I burn my face off. While we wait for the pogos to cool down, I've got some little matzo, they call them matzo sticks, but they're more like matzo bites. <laughs> I did take them out of the freezer about a half an hour ago so they weren't frozen frozen. Again, I'm gonna be guessing on cook time on those, but I'm gonna give those, we'll say four minutes as well. So let me set my timer here, we'll start that, and we'll drop that in slowly. A Little bit more snap, crackle, pop there, I think because there's still a little bit of the frozen water on the outside of those, um, on the outside of those matzo sticks. So, pogo time, a little bit of ketchup, we were eating our fries here. Let's give uh, one of these a try. Feels hot. Oh my God, so good. Probably the best pogo I've ever had. Amazing. We started hearing a little bit of noise in our uh, deep fryer here and we realized that some of these matzo sticks were starting to burst, but they look amazing. Two and a half minutes cook on those. We'll give them a few minutes to cool down and then let's try one. While we're waiting for our matzo sticks to cool down, I've got roughly 16, 17 raw wings here. I'm just gonna give them a little towel dry and then start to drop those in. What I read online, because again, there was nothing in the book with this uh, product, what I read online is they suggested eight to 10 minutes cook time on wings. Because Jamie and I both, our preference is to have um, crispy wings, we are gonna run that for the 10 minutes and we might as well, because it's bang on here, we might as well use their timer and we'll drop those in. And we'll get our lid on. There we go. So I brought in a couple 
test samplers on the Monza sticks who have been anxiously awaiting these to be, well, we'll see how cool they are to try one. So go ahead, guys. <laughs> And cheesy, but good. Yeah. Super, super good. Crispy, crispy outside. Ooey gooey mozzarella cheese on the inside for two and a half minute cook. Pretty awesome little appetizer. So we're roughly five minutes into our cook. I just want to have a look at our wings, give them a little shake. They're starting to look really nice. We're right at the tail end of the cook here. A couple minutes ago, I lifted up that basket. Noticed a couple of the wings were sticking together. Just used a pair of tongs to pull them apart. Not a big deal. There, we're done. If you're a fan of the show, you know that we have reviewed tons of air fryers and done tons of wings. Does it make a difference to deep fry them versus air fry them? Let's try. Super crispy. As far as wings go, I don't see a huge difference between the deep fried and the air fried. If they were battered, maybe it would be a difference. Do you batter your wings at home? If you do, leave us a comment and let us know what kind of batter you use, what's your best technique, and we'll try it on a future video because I don't have any experience with battered wings because I'm a brand new deep fry guy. Raw naked wings like this, right out of the package, air fried versus deep fried, I don't see a difference. All right, so a couple of things I wanted to talk about. One thing I'm very confused with, if you're from Hamilton Beach out there, tell me why this is so confusing. On Walmart's website, it says there's a five-year warranty. On Hamilton Beach's website, it says there's a five-year warranty. But when you look at the book, it says, and you probably won't be able to read that here, but it says limited one year warranty, which I'm really confused with. So I don't really know. I mean, I didn't make any you know, inquiries as to where the confusion is there. But anyway, that was one little bone of contention. So my overall thoughts, I don't have a lot to compare it to because I've never bought a deep fryer before. It certainly deep fried and did a great job and is relatively mess free. I did put it on a, on a, um, a cutting uh, board just for that, uh, based on my uh, neighbor's recommendation, just based on that moisture. So there is some condensation moisture that comes out. As far as oil splatter, I don't see any, but I guess we'll find out afterwards when we do the full cleanup. Uh, cleanup, the baskets, now the handles do come off quite easily. The baskets and the black oil drum here that you can see, all are dishwasher safe. So that's really, really good. I will be draining and reusing this oil at some point once that oil is like super cold back to room temperature. My biggest issue I have with this, and Jamie, you may have to come around here. You'll see here that we I ended up taping this extension cord on because of how, and I, I could use my pinky, how delicate and how easily this comes off. Now, I get it, it's magnetized for safety reasons that if a kid or somebody walks by and, and they hit the cord, it does sound like it locks in there pretty good, but if this isn't sitting perfectly parallel, it just keeps coming off. And the cord is super, super short. But it would be the only negative for me, other than I find the outside surface, I don't know if it is stainless steel, but this metal surface is very kind of flimsy, like very, very thin. Other than that, for $100, I'm pretty impressed. I mean. The lid itself, I thought maybe was gonna be a challenge to put on and off because you've gotta line up these holes, but actually it went on very, very easily. A Couple of things that would be nice is more of a precise, maybe even a digital temperature control and timer. The timer, as you can see, is in five minute increments. So if you're trying to cook something for five, or sorry, for six or seven minutes, it's a guess. Same with the temperature control, goes from 265, 300, 340, 375. So if you're wanting something in between there, again, it's a bit of a guess. It appears that cooking at 375 is the way to go. The hottest temperature of the oil is the hottest. Another thing that would be really, really nice, and Jamie brought this up, would be either a drain plug or somehow a pouring spout off the side of these. Now, I don't know yet what it's gonna be like, but what I'm envisioning is a funnel with a screen over top of it into one of those jugs that I showed you at the beginning of the video into the jug to save that oil. But we'll see, I don't know. So that's our video. We hope you liked it. Make sure you turn that subscribe button gray, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.